hello everyone and we have a new video for you today today we are actually covering a camillo player here with amir how you doing amir i am doing really good today getting to watch camillo is probably one of my favorite things because this character just starts dashing around dancing around on entire fight making people look somewhat silly sometimes getting hit by duende going back and forth oh for sure i actually when I had to go and learn Camillo, this was definitely one of the uh, funner characters to play. I didn't play him very well, but he was very, very fun to play as a as a character. Uh, so it would be interesting to kind of watch the, the gameplay here. I know this is one of the higher ranked Camillo players uh, currently in KR and also cooking up some interesting builds. We we did take a quick look at the build of the of this one and uh, we actually have Elysian Halo being run on this Camillo specifically. Yeah, this is not only just Halo, but we are running Halo and Myth Shield together, which makes sense because it allows us to stick onto a lot of people during a fight and just use this Halo passive to keep getting this percent max health damage that we're getting from, I think it's Biotic Infusion is the passive. Yeah. Um, and Halo itself isn't too bad, giving a decent amount of defense and a lot of attack power, I think giving 35, which is like that that is not an an unnoticeable amount especially when you're getting percent health damage on top of it uh i wonder if we will be taking this fight though or if we'll try and get away we have q3 not next fully build but i don't think it matters it does look like we'll oh actually wait we might not fall on the floor blank forward missing the q3 though it's a nice dodge on the charm but Hiram doing Iram things trying to be annoying. Oh Yeah, yeah, there we go. Sadly falling down and watching Elena just W three times all over him is always funny to me. That's so unfortunate too, because I feel like he definitely could have won that. That was uh that was definitely a favorable fight. Sadly we didn't have boots ready and we didn't have our arm ready, so we couldn't take the fight exactly how we wanted to. If we just had I think the extra amount of damage that our arm piece finished or getting one more crit by finishing our boots then we might have been able to win that one 100 i think the arm yeah i think if the arm piece was finished i think that is actually a completely different fight uh the the arm difference upgrade early on matters so much for these kind of characters but we'll have to now now the builds are done though so you know gloves are off no no early cheese fights coming out so we'll, we'll see where our Camillo ends up taking these kind of fights because looking at his comp, he does actually have uh, a frontliner. So we do we do have him actually running Vampiric right now for Augments. And we have our Nikki as our frontline engage and then Aya as our secondary DPS. Uh, yeah, I assume that a lot of these fights will devolve down to Nikki goes forward and Camilla goes forward. And they're both causing so much chaos that Aya's allowed to do her own thing on wherever she wants, wants in the fight. She can go to the side, she can maybe even dive in the middle, press R. It's uh, it's just up to her to decide where she wants to take the fight. Or we're going to have Nikki peeling for our Aya while we dive forward. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. It sounds like it's going to definitely be double dive forward and then just Aya does whatever she wants because she'll have the free room to play. Especially because she's AR Aya. And Aya's got a lot of incredible tools to be able to escape. So they don't have to necessarily worry as much about Aya in these circumstances. No, we actually do see the Magnus biking forward and we're just going to stick on him. Trying to get Q3 in the middle of the fight. Yeah, pulling the Jackie back. And sadly, Jackie's able to get the resets. And we're unable to find the Magnus either. Getting a bit of healing from killing the Aya. That's so unfortunate. But, uh, and our Q3 just runs out as we're trying to cast Q for it. Those are some of the things that, it, it just hurts. It, it, you feel the pain after you cast that one. Oh, I know, right? Because now it just looks like he randomly queued the wrong direction, but he had Q3 ready. He knew what he was going to do. Yeah, sadly, it just ran out. Perfect timing for him. I think they're probably just going to start going to farm because at this point, most objectives should be contested. And yeah, we will just most likely join our Aya over here in archery to make sure that we can get some of this, uh, some of the good archery farm that respawns on day two. 
Yeah, the, the benefit of the early loss, but actually Camilla knowing that they already got that farm just goes into school right next to the zone, has a great farm as well to be able to get. So just uh, doubling up that farming because he, he probably knows from the recon that no one's here and they're able to just clear both zones quickly. Yeah, watching a Camilla clear animals as well, like using the E into WQ as well, like it, everything just, it looks so smooth when done right and you can tell that he is doing it right. It is definitely a, a sight to behold. And interesting to see though that uh, in that last fight again, I'm, and we're probably going to see this a lot uh, if they if Nikki and Camillo aren't deep enough that causes everyone to give attention that this poor Aya might suffer the same fate that happened to her with the Magnus and Jackie where she sort of is just public enemy number one and her whole purpose is just to stall while Camillo and Nikki get the free room to play the game. Yeah, hopefully we can see the Nikki and Camillo engaging a bit before the enemy team even notices they have an Aya so that they can be the focus of the fight. Aya gets to run in right after and start gunning people down. For sure. And our first upgrade is actually Tree on the boots going Alexander's. Um, that is actually a pretty good upgrade. We're getting a, a decent amount more attack power and the crit difference between Alexander's and Bucephalus is pretty noticeable for a lot of characters. Um, a big thing is that if you ever want to swap off of a crit piece, um, you primarily want to stay around that like 66-67% crit chance, just so that you're guaranteed a crit on every other auto. Um, but Camillo is a very big crit reliant character. When you do play the crit build, you want, I want to say like somewhere around 80-ish uh, to 90% crit chance because your Q counts as an auto attack, your W counts as an auto attack. You want to be making sure that all of your different forms of auto attacks are getting crit. Right, for sure. And I mean, luckily, we, I mean, we already know it here. He's going to be running that ghillie suit. It's the, the tuxedo upgrade uh, for chess piece that just recently came out has been so good on so many crit characters. So definitely he'll be taking that to help compensate for his upgrades. Yeah, we're seeing sim similar thing happen in this fight where our Aya is not really allowed to play because she's just being run down by a Jackie, but we're allowed to just run off onto the other side of a fight, murder the Aiden, and try and rejoin her, but I don't know if we're able to get Q3 off in time to heal, and yeah, sadly we won't be able to get it off. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate early on here. I mean, the playstyle doesn't seem to be working well, but I think it's mostly they faced two Jackie team comps. Jackie's have been able to stick onto the Aya really well, and Camillo just hasn't been enabled yet with his items to be able to put enough pressure with Nikki to counterweight the fact that Jackie can just take out Aya's pretty early. Yeah, Jackie being able to kind of just press E, W, R, and run forward makes it a lot harder for this Aya to play, while on Camillo, you have to press a few more buttons than Jackie. Can't just press all of your uh, movement abilities and then and then right click someone exactly plus also i mean we were against aiden who's a little bit of a tankier person and had lenny supporting him so not not as easy of a of a comparison of who who gets to run down who faster yeah but i think we will be seeing a few transitions being bought here oh we'll also be getting a free myth roll from uh from killing a spare going right into the arm slot I actually wonder why we're deciding to go a bit more defensive as we have an AR character, we have a Nikki who is primarily built a bit tankier. Like, in my eyes, we should be building a bit more damage, but the, it's probably just some new tech that he's cooking up. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the streamlined, right? It has to be for the extra increased movement speed by 20% for three seconds to make it so he can't be run away from. It would make sense. It allows us to hit Q3 a lot easier because we'll be hitting our... We'll be getting the first Q off of our primary engage and then our second Q is usually just like randomly in the middle of the fight. And I think we'll be getting our Q3 off like right at the tail end of Streamlined being active. So hopefully it can connect a few more times. Yeah, well, we'll, have to, we'll have to see if it helps pay off here in, in, in this game. I mean, the move on speed makes sense to me if, as long as we're not losing enough damage, right? Because like now, as we mentioned, we just now went to uh, the ghillie suit, one of the best crit uh, items in the game right now, especially for the chest piece. 
and giving him now 86 percent crit which is i think where we're going to be staying for the rest of the game um i think we might be going a bit further up up to 90 percent because i know a lot of camillas like to go for the weapon upgrade but i don't remember if the weapon actually gives you a lot of crit so it all depends on how much crit chance the weapon gives you uh, being i think it is called uh it's the, the meteor claymore um because a lot of people don't realize but the weapon that he is currently on already gives you magnetic mag magnetic midnight um but meteor claymore also has it which is very nice which yeah if that gives him more crit that'll definitely be good for uh for him overall like you mentioned keep that high crit on the camilla it's really really nice to have and i mean right now it seems to be fine for the damage i mean the movement speed seemed pretty nice to keep the marcus in place uh for him during during the initial engagement of the fight yeah being able to stick on literally any target no matter their speed no matter their movement abilities is very nice especially on a character such as camillo where a lot of your defense ability is just within your ability to dodge abilities um, Camillo having a lot of dashes and Duende being a, don't remember exactly the percentage, I think it's 20 or 30 percent damage reduction. Um, you just need to be able to move around the fight, make sure that you're not really being hit, uh, opposed to some other tanks where, or I guess other bruisers or dive characters where they have some sort of damage mitigation ability that is very easy to use, such as Nikki using her W right here to just deny the uh, the CC and get some damage mitigation coming out. For sure. And I mean, I mean, let's be real here. That, that sweet justice uh, for the Aya being able to kill the Jackie in that last uh, little catch off. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look, see, Lenny just couldn't get away from him. Yeah, nothing we do can really get a Camillo with, uh, with Myth Shield away from us, but we're also able to just hitting the first Duende going forward. I don't think we're going to see too much else from this fight because uh, the Aiden is pretty low and we are now three. Yeah, we, I mean, we were able to just uh, systematically cut them down. And I think that that's what we we were expecting in the first early game fights. But I think really it was just an item difference. We just didn't have our items enabled yet for allow us to be able to kind of leave our Aya alone and do damage on our own. And now that we do have the damage to be able to run it, we can just kind of run down characters like Lenny and they have no way to get away from us, even with their mobility tools. And we are going to end, yeah, at 88%. We didn't end up going the, the Claymore. Yeah, because uh, a small difference between Meteor Claymore and his old Claymore, the uh, MK2, or sorry, his old Rapier, the MK2, is uh, that the, what's it called? The Magnetic Midnight on the first one i believe doesn't actually deal damage whereas the upgraded magnetic midnight does deal damage so he gets a bit of a damage amp as well here getting the upgrade which is very nice and do we see the halo yet yeah seeing the halo come out now from the i think four score that he was given by his teammates that they got from omega yeah, now we have the full build we'll have to see how this cooks i mean there's a lot a lot of effects that are going to be able to proc as soon as he goes in you know he's going to be able to apply slow he's going to get a movement speed buff he's going to do percentage hp damage so it's going to be uh, a lot of impact on him as to whoever he decides that he wants to initiate with yeah it's going to be very nice seeing a lot of damage come out from him but also a lot of utility he's not just here all for himself he's also trying to make sure that his team is able to play the game behind him well, we say that, but I don't know. I has been kind of left alone a lot of times. Um, well, uh, hopefully our Nikki can play the game behind us. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think it's to help enable Nikki. I don't think he cares too much about his ADC at all. I think he's solely trying to just play to, for, to help himself be able to keep playing in the fight, but also to let Nikki play in the fight. Because I think uh, at the end of the day, all he cares about is Aya living for as long as she can by herself. Yeah, because as Camilla, we don't have too many tools to be able to peel for the Aya. So just making sure that we can try and at least trade one for one is a very nice thing to do. But it looks like we might be contesting Wick. Uh, we have a few teams in front of us, but actually, no, we're going to be 
I think just trying to control here. hotel. Yeah, I think it's we're going for the box here. Yeah, this is a very safe position. I think rather than trying to contest Wick, not knowing how many teams are over there, we already don't have control of the zone, meaning that we have to start pushing in, using abilities to take space. Just grab the free box that we know is here. The other thing, too, that we can always consider as well is that the free box is safe, so we have it instantly. We get a good, quick upgrade. But on top of that is is that not necessarily will a team immediately get Wickline. Now, it is looking like this team is going to just get Wickline for free, but it is very likely that with six teams alive that there is people contesting it. And if a team is contesting it, that allows you to easily come in for a third party. So you get your free red blood item and into a potential advantageous third party if there are two teams stalling out the Wick line. Yeah, especially because the Wick is spawning in a zone right beside us. We can just grab this box, start walking over as they did, uh, realize that Wick is not getting contested and just dip and go back to archery range, which we know has our farm coming back up. Also, that lightning strike just <laughs> perfectly hitting him as he is grabbing console. Felt a bit targeted. It definitely was a little targeted. <laughs> but I think we know that there's a team above us as we see the pings coming out. It is yet another Jackie team, which is seems to be the only thing we've really fought this lobby. Yeah, it's actually oh. the same team, but oh my gosh, the damage coming in. That is a lot of damage coming out. I think we're just getting so much damage coming from the Magnetic Midnight, the slow as well. Getting the Elysian Halo damage on top of it, being able to EQ. And we're also just waiting for him to, uh, waiting for the day to change before we actually go for the kill. Trying to make sure that he can't get the revive off. I think they won't get it off anyways. Yeah, no, the self explosion though, definitely a good tool now available so that people can't just kind of leave the body there. But it didn't matter, they're not able to get the buyback. So they, that team is now crippled. It's very nice to see just some smart play coming out after they take the kill. Make sure that you just let the body full kill and or blow up instead of uh, full killing it yourself. I would have liked to see after they hear the detonation start that they try and get the kill so that they reset whatever cooldowns they used. But I guess because they didn't really use any big important cooldowns, there is no reason to. Right, exactly. Plus, like, yeah, it's it's important to just wait because sometimes people just forget to blow themselves up. And if you just leave them there, sometimes it, they just won't blow up. And then the date cycle changes. And then at that point, their team can't buy back even if they had an opportunity to. Yeah, and that's when uh, that's when you're crying because it's just slightly too late to actually play the rest of the game. Yeah, I've, I've had that happen too many is... times. It's very unfortunate. But it looks like we have a clean third party, actually. Ooh. We are blinking forward to just get a free D skill onto uh, onto this Emma. Emma just blew up. The, like, again, it's all the procs happening all at the same time as soon as he D skilled in. Like the damage just, we EQ, we're getting the Magnetic Midnight proc, the Halo proc, and then because we're EQ and I assume a bit of damage extra, either an auto attack or maybe even one of our triggers can proc it as well. We're getting the Streamline triggering right after that. It is a lot coming out like no one can get away from us halo being on a two second cooldown is very massive for our character as we are auto attacking more than every two seconds well exactly and i i, th I think it's i mean it's, we'll have to see if it changes any here in the next few couple like fight engagements that he has but so far every time we've seen it it really looks like he's just turning into this massive like burst character yeah, you'd never really expect this much burst coming from a Camilla because the I think the Halo is not something you see too often, as well as the weapon upgrade just adds so much damage as it's, I think, 11 damage per level, which at level 20 is, it's maybe a bit too much. Oh, and yeah, we're just seeing a thousand damage come out to this Kathy after one combo. This is, we didn't even get to use Q3 which, to a lot of people, is one of Camilla's scariest abilities. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it really does show that, that that this is kind of the idea of the build. Plus, he's a little tanky. You know, he's not the tankiest, but, you know, the, that miss shield does help a little bit keep him in the fight a little longer. Camilla is known for usually preferring to go a tank chest piece, but I assume that as we're going a tank arm piece, and our headpiece has a decent amount of defense, being 15, which 
isn't too uh, unsought for, as I think a lot of tank head pieces are also 15 defense. Actually, yeah, some uh, tank pieces are 10 to 15 defense, so it's it's pretty pretty comparable. Yeah, so he has the defense to start to compare to losing out on a tank chest piece, as now he wants to go for the ghillie suit, which is just such a good crit item for a lot of these characters. I wouldn't be surprised if ghillie suit gets changed in the future, because, like, it is... I think it's being loved by so many players right now. It's incredibly well statted. Yeah, but sadly, the only issue is that we've been waiting for this item for way too long that it getting nerfed right after it comes out will feel so bad. Yeah, hopefully it's not right away, but I wouldn't be surprised with just how so many characters are picking up. But like, it's it was so needed because there were so many times where I'd have people talk about where they would just rather run tuxedo as their chest piece and just never upgrade chest piece than go for a different chest piece for for a different factor yeah i think another thing is that um fallen pegasus has not really been a well statted item for a while um the item has felt somewhat under like undervalued or not undervalued uh, understated so having to trade out my headpiece which in this case, he is running a Legion Halo, which just gives you so much damage. It's really well statted as well. For a fallen Pegasus, it it just makes you feel a bit sad. For sure, for sure. Yeah, and I mean, again, it, we talked about the tanky attributes of the Legion Halo, and the, like the only thing that you're really losing on it is a little bit of, like HP. But I mean, we're running 3K health right now. I don't think we need to worry about too much uh, losing a little bit of HP pool. Yeah, plus we have a lot of healing in our kit already, so the HP that we're missing is probably just being satisfied with the amount of extra damage that we're dealing, and then also being able to heal up a bit more from the damage that we're dealing. As we do go forward, we're just trying to 1v1 the backline, finding a really nice blink Q3 yeah, in their well, team. That's crazy. It wasn't even the backline. We literally went on, we went around from the other side, engaged on the tank, took the tank down to like 70% on our own just from the initial like engagement. And then just when we went on the Lian, Lian just instant deleted. Yeah, Camilla just being able to do so much, jumping around fights and like as he does, duende all over them and dance make dancing it to make sure that his opponents look silly. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see if he keeps through with this build, but I like the build idea. I think uh, I think it worked out really well. And uh, I hope you guys liked it as well. And we'll see you in the next one.